Here I am going to be discussing with you that um, how we're going to start this. I have a half a sheet of paper taped down to my table. Now I'm folding another half a sheet of paper multiple times until I can um, crease it. The piece of paper on your table, I have it horizontal as well, which is mimicking the photograph that we have printed. This I'm going to crease, crease, crease over and over again until it gets um, a little bit uh, loose so we can tear it. You can use the scissors at this point. I just don't have a scissors on me, so I was tearing. I am going to tape these two pieces down to the table. Later, I end up actually taping the top and the bottom uh, because it was wiggling around. So I would suggest to just tape the top and the bottom right now. If you have your drawing boards, I would suggest to tape this to your drawing boards. Tape sometimes, I am using scotch tape just because that's what I have here um, accessible, but you can use masking tape, whatever you have. Also, you need to have a straight edge and you also need to have a pencil. If you don't have a straight edge, like a ruler, you can use something creative such as a uh, comb or you could take a piece of paper and you can actually fold it in half. When you fold a piece of paper in half, you have a nice straight edge on one side. But now that edge is going to be thicker, so it's easier to work with. Or you could take another pencil and use a pencil. Here we have a photograph that is printed. We're going to look and notice that we have this white space on the right hand side that we have a box. I want you to pretend that there's a little uh, extra picture there. That way, the center of your building is right in the center of the actual photograph which is your front edge. So pretend that that white space on the right hand side is sky. So if you notice between here and here, that is approximately center. So this is your halfway point. We are going to now place that onto the sheet of paper that is below, which is your drawing sheet of paper. So I'm going to approximately figure out where halfway is. If you notice, I am not measuring. I am not using the ruler for that. So here I'm going to use the flush making sure my ruler is flush to the bottom of the piece of paper, meaning it's lined up. Now I am going to line it up with that mark that I had made. I am going to start a little bit higher than ha uh, towards the bottom, and I'm going to end a little bit below the top, leaving ground and sky space. Now we have to figure out where our vanishing points. So I'm going to use the roof line. As I use this roof line, I'm going to draw it first on the actual photograph itself. Then I am going to place it down onto the bottom. If you do not have this printed for yourself, if you notice on the PowerPoint that we have as well, it shows you where those are. But please try to think about um, where your vanishing points are on your sheet of paper yourself. If you notice, I don't have enough space. So I found a piece of paper that's just scraps that are laying around and I'm folding this in half again. This little piece of paper itself, however, you do not need a lot. The left hand side is going to be a very small amount and the right hand side is not going to be a huge amount either. I'm going to tear this again, same thing I did last time, but this time I'm going to be taping it to the actual image itself versus to the table. I'm going to tape this just a little bit below where my lines are going to be, so if you imagine where your vanishing point is going to end up. I could actually tape it a little bit lower because I'm going to get almost towards the bottom of it once we're done here. So here I'm going to continue my vanishing point onto this is a scrap piece of paper that is attached. And then I'm going to add the other line and here is my vanishing point. My vanishing point on here, if you notice how far away it is in relationship to the actual building structure. We're going to replicate this on our sheet of paper that we have on the uh, table. Now we're going to do the left hand side. The left hand side I'm going to tape this piece of paper to the photograph as well. And then I'm going to be drawing from the roof line and uh, make sure that you are lined up to make sure that it is actually accurate. And then come on down. Now you can either use this bottom line that is right here or you could use the center line. I am just going to use the center line again because that's what I used on the right hand side as well. If you notice, I did not draw the top line long enough, so I'm going to re-add a little bit of extra space there, making sure that my ruler is lined up. Now here's my left vanishing point. A lot of extra paper, so I'm just going to tear it. A 
left and right vanishing points. Make sure you guys figure out where those are, please, before you start drawing. The horizon line is where those two connect. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to actually take this roof line and we're going to estimate on our sheet of paper where it is. So I'm going to place the ruler on the roof line. I'm going to hold it as nice and even as I possibly can and lift it up and place it down. Or you can just estimate what angle that actually is. So I'm going to only draw a pencil line for the length that I approximately think it's going to be. Do not sit there and draw all the way across your sheet of paper. I'm going to continue this on the left hand side. So I'm going to estimate approximately angle it is, but if you notice I just shifted the ruler so later on in the video you guys will notice that I am redrawing this uh, specific one. So sometimes that doesn't work, sometimes better um, just guessing, but it's up to you. Students find that more successful by placing it on there. So my vanishing point is not in this specific spot where these two lines meet. Those are just random dashes that were on the actual piece of paper that I was using. So ignore those lines there. Now I'm going to use that center line that we had before. However, I need to know where that is located on that piece of paper. So if you take a look, this space that's right here, I'm using my pencil to guide you, is more than halfway on the bottom versus on the top. The top is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make sure that I have that accurate on here as well. So the top half needs to be smaller. So if I just estimate approximately here, is my bottom half larger? And it is. So I'm gonna make a little mark and then I'm gonna double check this. So I am above halfway, but not a huge amount. If you notice, I'm only this much different. Now that is the top line there. That is not the center or the bottom. So I may, I'm making it off that top line. So here you can see I'm at the top, okay? And it goes to the vanishing point. Now I'm going to bring that same angle down and see where that's at. If you notice here, I don't like the angle, so I'm going to end up redoing it as well. So I, as I remove that, I look at it and I realize that it's off a little bit once I look at the actual photo, or photograph and the drawing and compare them. So here I'm going to re-erase everything that I just did and start over. So I'm gonna redo that angle. So I'm making sure my piece of paper is how I want it to be. Now I'm going to place my ruler down and I'm going to lift it up and try not to shift that angle. And I'm going to place it down where I would like it. Making sure it's on that dot that I had drawn and then I'm going to draw those lines over to my vanishing point. Where my vanishing point now is where those two lines meet. So we had just found our vanishing point by making the roof line and that center line meet. We're going to do the same thing on the left hand side. Double checking. And drawing my line all the way onto that little piece of paper, but skipping where the skyline is. I'm double checking the roof line. This is where I was telling you guys before that I found out that my angle is way off, meaning um, probably a sixteenth of an inch. So as you can see right there, I'm erasing those extra lines and then I'm going to continue drawing those lines onto my excess sheet of paper to find my left vanishing point. I thought it would be nice to keep in the amount of times that I go back and forth versus you guys just seeing that I do it perfect right away. So then that way, in case you guys are adjusting, I want you guys to see that I even have to adjust. This is where I find out that my little piece of paper is, I think is uh, where I need that extra piece of tape, but maybe it's further along. Now we have to figure out where the back edges. So this back edge, if you notice in the photograph, is not actually straight. It's at an angle like this. We are going to pretend it is straight. Um, otherwise there's another vanishing point that's crazy far away up on top on the um, above. Okay. So here we're going to place um, approximately where we think that these are. So what I'm showing you is I'm relating it to the space on the piece of paper as well as the space between one another. So here to here I'm measuring that space and I'm measuring this space. If you notice, I have equal amount of sky. But up here, if you notice, I do not have equal amount of sky. So I notice that this is wrong. 
So down here, I'm readjusting this space. So I'm bringing it in a little bit and fixing it. Then you could take your straight edge, make sure it's flush to the bottom of the sheet of paper, and we're going to make this again, like I said, straight. So instead of having it at a funky angle, it will look good straight, I promise. It's just the person that took this photograph was using a specific lens. They're also a little bit on the shorter side and looking upward, which is making it seem like it has a third um, pers perspective. But if they used a wide angle lens, it would have been perfectly straight. So here we have a straight line coming down on this side. Before you continue, double check this space. Does it look right? Is the left hand side actually bigger than the right hand side? And also erase any extra lines that you have on that piece of paper before you begin because otherwise it gets confusing. Now we have to do our ground. So from the center front edge, I'm going to take my left hand side to my left vanishing point. This is where I'm taking tape to it. But always most things that are um, that you're drawing on this right now is going to go in the sky or in the um, sunny area is going to go to your left vanishing point. Anything in the shadows is going to go to your right vanishing point. Besides the only thing that changes is anything that's on the interior of this. So when you go walk through this is like a little tunnel that you can walk through. The tunnel itself, of course, is 100% in shadow, so it is hard for that con to continue. But on the exterior space, just think, if it's in the sun, it goes to the left vanishing point. If it's in the shadows, it goes to the right vanishing point. Now we have to figure out where the basic structures are with inside here. So if you look at here, this space that's right here is the right-hand side of this like pillar or the section. Now if you notice it's a lot bigger than the left hand side. So if you think about um, that because it's closer to us it's going to be much bigger. So I'm going to place down approximately where I think it is and notice how much more space I have. It was in that doorway and would it make sense? That's one way you could think about it. Another way to think about it, um, I'm going to draw this line here first because I like where I placed it. But another thing you could think about here is that this line goes all the way up to that spot. We don't have it drawn yet, so. Sorry. So figure out where you think that that thing is. I will show you again here in just a second some more um, information about how to find this little space. So I made sure that this space right here is definitely much larger. So when you take this photograph, and you do some measurements, you'll notice that right here, if I'm holding it, I have my entire pencil um, head and the um, eraser head I meant as well as the eraser. So here I'm going to measure my space and think about right now, I should take away where the eraser head is. That's how much smaller it was for me. So as I'm measuring it, the eraser head is that much smaller. And then I looked at, did it evenly go smaller and smaller? So now I'm going to be placing the next one. So I made a mark on where I believe the left hand side is. I would like you guys to estimate where you guys think this is. Just make sure that it goes from small, medium to large as it goes across. It's not going to be a huge difference. Some students in the past have actually thought that these were all equal, but they're not. Okay, so small, medium, large. Now we have to figure out where this line is. This line itself is going to help us figure out um, in general. So I'm basing it off the line that we have drawn in the middle and thinking about where that actually is. It is centered. So in between these two spaces, I'm going to draw a little dot, double check that I am measuring it properly because sometimes my eye is not accurate. So if you notice, I am pretty darn close. So I am adjusting it, but I am off by a hair. So now I have my little dot. I am going to go left side and right side, depending on what vanishing the center line. So I'm on the right hand side of the center line. So I'm going to go to the right hand side. So the front edge, left hand side. So going to the left. So as you can see, I drew my lines to that point. This is not a fluke. Just um, now I'm erasing the little excess. So if you did not draw your lines all the way up to that spot, please do so. Now we have to figure out the right hand side. The right hand side is going to be very similar to the left hand side. So however, there is this section that's right here in the middle. We have the top line. We have to figure out that bottom line before we go on. 
So that thing has a thickness to it. So here is my dot for the thickness of that strip, like the stripe that goes all the way around. And so I'm placing that there. There's more information on the middle of that stripe that we'll work on later. All the details with inside that space. I'm jumping over that center point because it's not going through there. I don't want to have to erase it later. Now we're going to think about this space. This is going to be very similar to the left hand side. It's just they're much more closer in size, however. So if you look here, measuring that space, then I look here, it's not that much different. However, that center space depends on how, where you're measuring it, um, on the inside of the arch or the outside of the arch. So just make sure that you guys are placing little marks where you think it's approximately at, and then you're going to draw lines from there. I am going to be fast forwarding this little section here in just two seconds um, for you because all I'm doing is drawing vertical lines after I figure out where my placement is. Double checking my measurements. Just make sure you guys are using vertical lines. So making sure your ruler is always flush to the bottom of that piece of paper. There are multiple lines actually inside here, but we'll work on that later. Just make sure you get the basic structure. So now you'll see that now we have to uh, get the rest of the structure up here. So we only have one line so far. So either if you're on above or below it, you need to figure out where you're at. I drew right here. So now I have to make multiple marks to figure out where I'm at. So I'm going to figure out that center point, the top of the darker arch way, or the, not the arch way, the little line. So now I'm going to figure out that that is approximately halfway. So I'm going to make a line and I want a hair above. Now I'm going to be drawing a line down to the vanishing point going to the right hand side. However, I'm going to go beyond just a little bit. So if you notice, I went beyond into the sky. Now I'm going to go to the left hand side, going beyond just a little bit. So these two things are hanging out because they are going to be going to the um, center point here. You could see we have that. I don't remember why I put that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is figure out the thickness of this piece. So here is the bottom. So I am going to be um, putting it about one third up from the top. Now I'm going to draw this line just to here. So I am going to be going to right side over to the right vanishing point. Now I'm going to do the same on the left hand side. It's a lot of repetition back and forth between the left and the right. So this little space right here, it has a vertical line at it. So I'm going to go up on that space as well. So you can see I made a tiny little itty bitty line going up. It is going only about halfway between those two lines making sure my ruler is flush to the bottom of the sheet of paper every single time. Halfway up. Now I'm going to take that and this is that little itty bitty space that's right there. So right here is that vertical line. Now I'm going to take that and go halfway, made a, dark, uh, made a dot, and now I'm going to draw that to the vanishing point. And draw the other one to the vanishing point. Remember, as you go along, erase anything if, if necessary. Here, I just made a little mistake with uh, like how I was holding my pencil. So now I have like a double thickness. I'm just making sure my line is straight because I had erased part of it. Okay, so now that I have those lines there, 
we now have to work on the next um, piece going up. I like to erase all my excess lines as I am working so that I don't get confused. So now we're going to work on this little angle that's here. That angle is just random, so it doesn't go to the vanishing point. So you can just draw it. Look at the angle that's actually on the photograph and try to mimic. Now we have to draw this. This goes to the vanishing point. So, so does this one and this one goes to the right hand side. So they go opposite. So this little itty bitty corner from where we had gone out on into the sky, we are now going to bring it back to the building to the left vanishing point. Then we're going to do the left hand side and go to the right hand vanishing point till the structure of this stru uh, building. Now we have that overhang. Where that overhang is, uh, we'll come back to in a little bit, but you'll notice that the top has the same overhang as well as the, the middle section. However, the top is much smaller than that middle section. We're going to figure out approximately where I need to go. So I'm going to be placing a dot where I believe that that is going to start. Then I'm going to go to the right hand side vanishing point. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. Now I have to figure out the space in between them. So thinking about where you actually are located at and how much space you have to go up. So I made a little dash right here on where I think that that's going to be located at. I'm going to go to the right hand side vanishing point and I'm going to draw that next line. As you notice I went out into the sky just a little bit because that's my overhang. Now this is where we have to go back to the vanishing points that are opposite from one another. So this is the bottom. So I'm doing a tiny little line that is going to the other vanishing point and the other vanishing point, a tiny little line going back to the building between those two lines. So it's connecting those two lines to the actual building. Now we're going to have to do that straight up one. So we're going to have to go straight up as well. So you have to think that you're basically repeating everything that you had done before. So we have that vertical line that is going to be there. So you're going to use your straight edge and make a small itty bitty line that is going to go vertical where it connects to that space. I made this very small one to the point where I don't know if you guys can even see it. At the top of that small little line that you just had made, we're going to go over to the orthogonal lines, which are the vanishing points, which are orthogonals. So now we're going to draw that orthogonal line going to the center and the front edge. Now we're going to do the right hand side, making sure those two have lined up. So I'm going off of the left um, where it actually meets in the front edge, making sure it lines up with my vanishing point. I don't like how those connected over there, so I'm going to clean it up a little bit and redo those lines. How I hold my pencil sometimes makes a huge difference. So if I'm holding it more vertical or at an angle, try to be consistent as much as possible. I'm trying to stay out of the camera viewpoint. So here, now we have to do the angle here. This is the angle itself. You guys are going to just draw in because it doesn't go to any vanishing point. Then I'm going to extend my little piece just a hair. I have um, maybe a sixteenth of an inch that I'm going to extend it. Now I'm going to draw where I have that extension piece over to the little angle that I just had drawn. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. I messed up. I accidentally hit my arm on the ruler, so I am redoing this. All right, so now that I have that at the center point, I'm gonna take those two and connect those two dots. So I'm gonna go from the center over to the left-hand side vanishing point. And then I'm gonna make that little angle that you see in the picture.
So now we have to make sure that that little edge is vertical. So we have another vertical little edge that we have to end up drawing. Making sure it's flush to the bottom paper. I'm going to go vertical up and another vertical up. Making sure I'm flush again. Very small little line. And then I'm going to go and connect those to the top using my vanishing points. The right hand side goes to the right. So now we have to figure out all these little lines that are with inside here. So where the doorway is or the thickness of the actual archway. So if you notice the space that's between the archway and there's little dashes that are on the side where these highlights and shadows where it goes in and out. So there's bending of the structure. So I'm making little dashes where I assume those locations are. So making sure that they're vertical, making sure they're flush to the bottom of the piece of paper. I'm going to now draw those vertical lines. So this is where the flat surface um, goes into a shadow, then comes out to like a brighter surface, and then goes in towards the um, center of the archway. Making sure that these are vertical every single time. So I'm flush to the bottom. And then these are really tight. So um, if you're slightly off just because of the thickness of your pencil or something like that, you could adjust it or you could just say it's pretty darn close. It's up to you. I'm not going all the way up to the top with the ones in the middle because they only go about halfway or to that line that we had drawn in the center, that band. So I'm just going to slightly above that band. Now I'm going to draw the thickness of the arch. If you notice, I only went to approximately where that band is. So we have this archway that's right here that we have to worry about. However, um, we have to deal with these inwards and outwards areas first. So it goes in and then um, back out and then goes back in. So it goes to the right vanishing point and then goes to the left vanishing point and then back to the right vanishing point. So I'm going to take this line and I'm going to go where the band is and I'm going to continue that band into those little crevices that we just did. So if you see, I connected where that band was and I went inward to the right hand vanishing point. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom one so I don't have to move my ruler as much. So I just did both of those two pieces based off of that band that's right there. Now I'm going to go to the left vanishing point based off the lines that we just had drawn and connect those to the next line. It's a small little segment again. Making sure that my thickness of my pencil where it lands makes sense on where the next pe uh, pencil line actually was. So when I place my pencil down, I make sure that it actually matches up with the pencil that I just drew before. So now we are going to go back to the right hand vanishing point. And this is the thickness of the archway that we're working on right now. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom one and connect that one up as well. So here we're going to think about is that there's this arch. However, on the right hand side, this actually has a small little gap right here. It is hard to see, so I am just drawing it on my own piece of paper. If you look really carefully, you'll be able to see it on your own. So it's based off of that band. If you go straight from that band coming down, it actually connects right up to the edge of the, um, that piece there. We're going to draw that really quick. I'm just going to make a mark approximately where I believe that would be. Then I'm going to draw a vertical line from that mark. And this mark is going to go all the way up to um, this line right here. Okay, as I notice is that one of my lines is a little wonky. So this line right here is perfectly straight, but the inside line I have was a little bit wonky. So I'm going to end up erasing that. See, a little wonky. And so I'm going to erase that center line and redo it. So I must have had my um, straight edge not perfectly straight when I did that. And I mean, it is a very small amount off, but it bothers me enough that I'm going to erase and redo it. So make sure if you guys see anything off on yours to redo it as you're working. Otherwise, as you get to the point, 
Now we have to start working on some of the details within these bands so that we can actually make the archways. So right here, there is an extension that goes out a little bit further. So I'm going to be um, drawing that little extension that we had that was inward, basing it off of the left hand sides. So if you notice it's a little bit lower than um, the right hand column. So that little space that's right there is a little bit lower. Um, I have a little line that I'm erasing because it is not needed because the archway is going to be there. All right, so now that I have that erased, there's this little space that's right here. Like I said, the band is slightly lower and I based it off for the right hand side. Now this little space has a little jag out and it's just similar to these that we just did on the other side. So same thing we did on the very top, we now have to do it down here. So first off, we have to figure, figure out is how and where certain things are. So approximately halfway, it's flat. So there's a colored flat band. So I put a dot halfway and I'm going to draw a line to my right orthogonal or vanishing point. And then I'm going to draw a line to my left one. Remember on the left hand side though, we went in and out so many times with different spots. So just make sure that you're in the right spot. So if you notice, I moved my pencil line down and then I'm doing it on, I jumped over it and I did it to the next spot. Now these two spots I did, but I didn't do the inside. So now I have to take that line that we just had drawn and I have to go to the right vanishing point. Tiny little line. Now I'm gonna to go to the left vanishing point. It's another tiny little line. But as I'm doing this one, I can also do the one that we just did if I wanted to. But now I'm gonna to go to the right hand side and right vanishing point. And then now I have to do that guy that goes there, okay? So I have to line it up with this one that's right here. I am going to place it there, okay? So now I have that done. Now I have to figure out from here, this is where it jags up and comes back out. So here, I'm going to erase my extra top. So remember that the top spot is um, not going to really be there because we have to bring where the line is that we just did, I have to bring it to the right hand side vanishing point where it connects to the edge of the wall. So here I'm going to draw a very small little line, which I am assuming is approximately the length that that piece is. Now I'm going to draw the vertical line based off of it, making sure that my ruler is flush to the bottom of the sheet of paper. So I made a very small line going up. So now I have a corner. The corner itself, right there, is going to end up having to go to the uh, vanishing point as well. And I have a vertical line. So these two spots right here are going to go to the left vanishing point. So I have the corner and I have the top of the vertical line. So here's the corner. And then I have the top of the vertical line. So we made kind of like an L shape right there. And so now I had to uh, connect those. Now those lines right there, we're gonna pull over um, the little space that we have and go over to the right hand side. So all we have to do is that center line in the middle. The center line in the middle is going to be longer. I'm making sure that I, my pencil line lined up with that area in the center. Now we have to go and take this space and go to the vanishing point on the left hand side because we need that overhang. Now I need to do the vertical line. From the top of the overhang, where the corner was, I'm going to go upward. However, I'm only going to go up a small amount because I can actually see where that line needs to go. Now I need to just extend that line that I have to that upper line. It's a very small amount. There you go. Now I'm erasing any extra little marks that I had on that piece of paper. This little corner right here, we now have to do um, a little itty bitty uh, space going to the left as well. So I'm just adjusting. There you go. And then I'm going to make another point. So if you look really uh, closely at your drawing, you'll see that there's a small little overhang. So I'm adding that little itty bitty one. 
You don't have to have as much detail as this. I'm just giving you everything in case you needed it. Now I'm just doing the left hand side. All of this you're going to have to repeat now over here multiple times because we're going to different angles. So this spot is the same over here. So I'm going to take those lines that I had just drawn making sure my ruler is lined up to the vanishing point as well as the lines that are on the side over here. And I'm going to draw them on this line. Now I'm making sure that my pencil, if you notice my pencil lines up, and I'm going to draw it here. Then I'm going to make sure my pencil lines up again, shifting it up to the top line, and then make sure my line lines up. Now here I have to do the same thing I did on this side. So now I have to do the angle going to the opposite vanishing point and then I have to do my vertical line and then finish it off. Making sure I do my vertical. Now you have to do the same thing going over to here. So there's a small little space that we have to do. We have to make sure all the lines are there, but we're not going to have any overhang. So this will be pretty quick. Now we have to go to the other side. So we have the small little gap again. So it'll be another quick one. Now we're going to go to the right hand side again, but this time there's going to be another overhang over in this space. Now right here you can't see very much, but it does the same thing on, the, on that side. So you're going to have that little corner, that little angle, and it goes to the vanishing point. So we're going to go to this vanishing point over here and making sure that we have that little flat edge that's coming over, which is the overhang. Then we're going to have the, I have too much pencil marks over here, so I'm just going to trace over what I just had drawn. So I'm going to redraw that one. And then you'll have to do your vertical as well. I just am redrawing some of the pencil lines that I just erased because I had um, too much marks there. Too many marks. Well, my English is horrible. So here's my vertical line. And then I'm just double checking my orthogonals, making sure that they are drawn um, dark enough. Now this little corner over here, we have to do the same thing that we did there as well. Now we have to do that right there. So there's a baby or a little overhang. Same thing we just did right here needs to go here. So I'm making all the lines from that one spot and I'm moving it over to the right hand side of that small little space that we have. This little space that we have is also going to have a little bit of an overhang.
Now I'm getting that flat corner, the flat edge, going to the right hand side vanishing point. Getting the vertical point, making sure that my ruler is flush to the bottom of the sheet of paper. This should be a few days worth of work already. So um, you are getting close to the end of the structure that you need. What we just need to do is we need to figure out the archways. And then that would be what I would like you guys to have for that Friday. So the archway itself is if you go in between the, those two points, it is in the center. So I'm going to measure between this line and this line to make sure I'm in the center. The center, what that is, and the reason why I'm saying the archway is in the center, is the highest point of the archway is going to be in the center between the two points where it connects. And that's how you do any archway. So I just drew a vertical line coming down this space here. Now this space, we're trying to figure out how high it is. You think about the wall that's on this side over here. So this space that's right here, I'm going to estimate it was about one third coming down. So I'm going to go one third of that space and I'm going to draw a little itty bitty line going across which made a little plus sign for me. Now you have to think about where does the arch actually come out of. So the arch itself is right here and it comes down into those spaces. So I'm going to curve the top of my arch so it looks similar to the curvature that I like over there. Now it's going to come out of this area that's right here. So double check that it's not going to be connecting to the edge of the building. It's actually coming out just a little bit further into those little points that you just drew. Then the archway on the left hand side, I had some vertical lines there so I was erasing, All right, it's going to come out of one of the intersecting points of where we had the vertical point. So you're going to just slowly go from left to right and from top and slowly connect it. So I, if you notice, I'm not just drawing one huge little arch, I'm going back and forth between my left and my right line as well as my top arch line making sure that my arch is approximately what I would be happy with. So now that I have that arch there, now I have to do the inside. This inside space is going to keep the same distance entirely the whole time, and it just falls right into the side of the wall, so it just disappears. It does not have a continuous arch as well. So I'm going to start figuring out where that is located, so it connects with that vertical line at the bottom. And I'm staying the same distance away and trying to keep that same arch curvature. So I'm mimicking the left hand side. And it just goes right into the wall. It just disappears. Now here you see that there is a, a double thickness. The double thickness, you're just going to stay approximately the same distance away. But look at where it comes out. It comes out a little bit higher up. And over here it comes out approximately right in the center. So take a look at where you are always drawing, observe the space a little bit. And here you can see I'm making a mark on where it comes out of the top and where it came out of the sides. So I'm doing the same exact thing as what we just did. However, I'm staying the same distance away from the actual um, archway that we had drawn. Now there's going to be a secondary archway that's inside the middle, which is going to be where that shadow is. So that shadow space, however, if you notice, it disappears on the right hand side. So the shadow, as it comes up, it disappears right there. So when you're drawing this one, make sure you're observing how that forms and how it does work because it doesn't go all the way around and it doesn't stay equal the whole way. When we're doing pen, you're going to be shading this area in, so you want to make sure that you have it accurately drawn. However, if you find out later on, of course, it's a pencil right now, so you can always erase it. You're going to be doing the same thing on the right-hand side. So the little baby arch is identical to this one. However, uh, you're just going to be doing the same thing on the right. This base down here needs to go to the right vanishing point. So the archway itself needs to go over here. So where the ground line is. But we first have to figure out this little baby one. So the little baby guy first. Then we have to do the other baby guy which is going to go to the left vanishing point. And then that's going to actually tell us where the exterior edge is for the right. It almost appears as if you're not doing anything according to my drawing. However, it does have a subtle change. 
so it's not perfectly straight lined. So now we have the archway in this space. However, if you notice, there's another arch in the middle. So this arch in the middle, we have to base it off of the arch that's on the right. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to draw that stripe. There's a stripe in the middle, and that stripe itself is going to go to your vanishing point. So the stripe is above the arch. So when you're doing these middle sections, there is going to be a lot of detail that's inside of it. And so please, if you can, try your best to get those things in there. However, this is part of your detail section. You could always wait to do this later on. I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to do it now. So there's our band. So this arch and this arch line up and go to this vanishing point. So to be able to get this arch, we're going to do the same thing that we did to this one. But see here, the top of this arch hits the top of this other arch, which is in the middle. So we can't do this the secondary arch until we have this one on the right hand side done. So now we're going to figure out the height and then we're going to continue moving on to the next where we figure out where the center is and copy the same thing that you did on the left hand side. I'm going to stop talking and uh, fast forward this little section here. Now that we have the second arch done, we can start working on the inside space. So the inside space, you're gonna look at where your band is and it's a little bit lower than the other one, but not too much. So the space that's on the inside here, if you notice, will continue all the way across the other side, which you could do now as well. However, I'll do it a little bit later. So I'm just working on this little space in here for now. 
we're gonna work on the bands and they all go to the left vanishing point because we're on the interior space. So the wall itself is facing that direction. It's mimicking the, the other wall that's in the light. And sorry for the noises in the background. Those are my kids. So if you notice over here, you'll um, start seeing towards the bottom on this little section that's below, uh, there's a lot of writing. So if you were walk to, to walk inside here, there's a whole bunch of names that are actually plastered on this. So you're going to give a little space for this and then um, later we'll end up drawing some little dashes that are representing those lines. This space right here needs to go to this vanishing point as well because now we have a ground line that is not accurate. So here we are going to draw that little dash, then we're going to go back to this other vanishing point so we have to deal with going in and out on the ground as well. And then come back to the left vanishing point, get the pillar or the archway, and then we're going to So now we have to take the lines that you guys just did here and um, do it on the inside as well. So I'm going to line it up in here and draw the lines on the center right here. So that pillar that we have for the interior archway, we have to get those lines that you have for where the archway is actually going to start. So right here um, where you have that little bump out, all the little decorative stuff, we have to get those lines on the inside. So I have that. Now I have to figure out is how thick I believe it is. So I'm going to draw a vertical line, making sure my ruler is flush to the bottom. And then I'm going to be drawing it pretty thin um, because I don't see much of that structure when you look at the photograph. So here I have a vertical line that is showing me that space. I have too much of those little orthogonal lines that we had, the decorative lines. So I'm erasing a little bit of them, like the length of them. So now I'm just going in and I'm just hand drawing the little extensions. Now we have to do the ground. The ground line itself is going to mimic the same ground line that's over here. So the wall, I'm going to line up with this other like ground line and then draw it coming off that space. So those two points. But first I'm going to draw the arch. For some reason I jumped there. I am sorry guys. Um, scatterbrained. So now I'm going to draw that arch. I'm just hand drawing it in there based off of the arch um, that I am visually looking at inside the photograph. Try to mimic it. However, the center of it is gone because it's inside the actual uh, building structure. Just making sure that the archway is accurately drawn. Little details. There's a secondary archway in here, so now I'm just hand drawing that one. It's really thin and it's really close to the other one. So I just drew another little arch. Now I'm drawing a vertical line for the edge of that arch. So if you notice this arch is more in the sun, um, it's that little gap that you'll able, be able to see. Making sure my ruler is flush. Now this is where we have to do uh, the left orthogonal line uh, and I am going to draw a little itty bitty dash. However, the bottom you'll notice is I just made a mistake. Now I'm going to say nope, nope, nope. Uh, you have to go to the right. So I don't know why I just did that. So um, go to the right vanishing point and it's going to line up with the wall that you just drew as well with the other one the ground line. There you go. So it can all lines up. So see, lines up. Okay. So the information we have on the right over here, we have to now place it into the small space inside the archway on the left. So I'm going to connect my vanishing point up and those lines up that are here and place them into this small little gap. You're going to do it with all the lines that you have.
So now we have this small skinny band that we have to place around the entire thing before we could do the actual pillar. So this little band that we have um, and this pillar that we have here, we have to get onto this piece of paper by creating this and figuring out where that's located. So I'm going to place a dot approximately where I believe it looks like it's located. I'm going to draw a line to the right vanishing point, but I'm going to jump over that interior space we just worked really hard on because I don't want to have to redraw it. Now it's a double thickness, so it has a small little space, and it's not very much, that I just shifted the ruler down just a little bit, and I'm going to draw that secondary line. Now I'm going to do the line to the left of the vanishing point, and I'm going to jump over the center as well because I do not want to have to do that. Don't worry about the actual pillars um, either, and there's a little tiny space that's right here that has to be done. The pillars, we're going to end up erasing these lines. So just continue drawing them across this space. Shift down um, my line. I don't really like where it's at, but that's okay. And then get the next line that you have. And you're gonna do that also on the left-hand side. So I could have done it where I jumped over and did it there, but for some reason I did not. Now there's a tiny little space that I have to go to the right vanishing point to get that. Now we can start working on our pillars, trying to figure out where they're actually located. So think about this pillar right here. How much space is it from the right hand side? I'm going to make little marks on where I think each of those vertical lines is going to be and how much space it is from the left hand side. Now I'm going to draw vertical lines. They go slightly to the line that we have or slightly above. So I'm going to actually draw them slightly above. Making sure my ruler is flush. Now that we have those three lines that are going vertical, now what we need to do is we need to get these lines that are going this direction. But before I do that, I'm going to erase the things that are on the inside because I don't want to have to deal with those later. So now we're going to go to the right vanishing point. The small little section that's right here, we're going to go um, from the lines that we had drawn to the right vanishing point. And we're going to connect up to those. So the little band that we're going around. It's going to be a small little itty bitty difference, but it will make it look more three dimensional. So as you see, I connected them to those points and went to the line that we have. Now I'm going to go to the left vanishing point, connect those lines that we just drew and go to the left. And I'm going to do that over here as well, showing us where the height actually is. So I'm going to erase any excess. Now there's a third band and this little chunk up on top. So this little chunk that's up on top, we need a vertical line. But first we need that little chunk that's right here. So that's one extra band. So I'm going to draw that little thickness that I believe it is, and I'm going to draw it to the right vanishing point. Then I'm going to draw it to the left vanishing point after I get the vertical point of where that needs to be. So I'm going to draw my little vertical line just a little bit higher. Now I'm going to do to the left. All the little intricate stuff above this we'll do towards the end of this video. Um, and that will be one of your last days. So, so all the little detail and stuff like this sculpture that's sitting on top of the stand should be one of the last days that you're working on it. Now I'm trying to figure out where those vertical points are that we end up having above it. So where the actual sculpture is sitting on. So here I'm going to make sure my ruler is flush to the edge of the piece of paper and I'm going to draw my tiny little vertical lines that are above it which are representing 
this space that is above the pillar, or the platform, I should say. I like the word pillar, I guess I say it a lot. All right, so now we need the top of it. So where do we think that it actually is? So I placed a little dot thinking about approximately how high it is. I'm going to draw to the left of the vanishing point and also to the right vanishing point. A little space. Then erase any extra lines that you have. Now we're going to repeat um, this on the other side. So I'm going to make sure I have the same height um, and these little lines that are in between as well really quick. So there's little detail lines that we could place inside here. We're going to repeat this on the left and I'm going to fast forward that as well. So um, just make sure that they're the same height. So the top of everything is going to line up over here. So figuring out the width of it first and then go from there. Now these have a slight angle on them right here, so they're not perfectly straight. So I'm just doing a, um, like a stair stepping like effect on them as they go over. Now we're done with those pillars. Now we need to start working on um, the next item. So when you're looking at this photograph right here, we have a lot of stuff going on. So we have these um, little reliefs that we have to figure out where we're going to be placing them. So I'm just going to make little dashes on approximately how close they are to the edges as well as to the tops and the bottoms. Based off of one of them, you're going to be able to have all three of them. So though you're going to have the one on the left hand side and you're going to have the one that's on the other wall, which is that long skinny one. So this first one is going to help determine the size and the dimension of the rest of them. So I'm going to go to the left vanishing point since this one is on the left wall. And as you see, I'm making the one on the far left as well at the same time. Now I'm going to get the height, so the tallest one, going off that dot that I just had created as well, making sure that I am um, as accurate as I possibly can be. Then you're going to do the vertical lines. There are many vertical lines. So you have a dimension to this piece. So there is um, like the border of it. There's the shadow area. So for a little bit, you're going to be working on um, all of those sections with inside of it. And then you're transferring it to the right hand side as well. So now I just drew that shadow line that's in there as well. So see this little shadow line that's right here is only like an L shape on the top. So just make sure that you're working on uh, looking and observing those spaces. Repeating on the left hand side. Okay. 
Now this spot right here, you can see there's a border on there. So a thickness of that actual space. So I'm going to draw, it's very, very thin. So the line is almost appearing to be on top of the other one, but it has a very small amount of difference. So I don't know if you can see it on my picture, but there is a small difference between the two lines, which is giving it a border. I'm drawing the verticals to stop that on the right hand side. Now we have to figure out also the um, other structure. So from here, um, I'm just adding some more lines for more thickness really quick. But the right structure on the right hand side, to figure out where that's actually located, you have to figure out where the building um, or the, the relief is actually hitting the center of the structure. So once I am done in this little area, you'll notice that I end up moving over to where the center um, line is, and I'll end up drawing a little dot in relationship to where this actually lines up. So this needs to be transferred over to here. Okay, but if I went from this spot, it would be off. So I need to make sure that this line, I'm gonna continue it to the center line. And I'm gonna do the bottom as well. So we have the same size window or same size um, relief, I meant. So now I'm gonna take that point and I'm gonna draw it to the right vanishing point. Then I'm gonna do the bottom one. And here you can see if I went from the actual window, it'd be off. I'd be at the point where I'm almost at the bottom of it. And so you'd have to erase that. So here, I'm just showing you things that students have made mistakes on. You have to make sure you go off of the dot that you had placed in the center. I'm only drawing approximately the size that I think it is. So this space that's right here, I'm going to say is approximately these areas. Now I'm going to draw the vertical lines and then I'm going to continue with the windows or the uh, relief uh, framing I meant. And I'm going to fast forward at this point. So now we have to start working on some of the other details inside this uh, structure. So we have it, all of the structure done. Now all we have to worry about is detail. So if you notice, there is a lot going on. So there's these little lines that are above here. So we already have one of the lines that's right here um, that we have that goes across. I'm going to make it a little bit darker so that you can actually see. There's a line slightly above it that we have to draw yet. Now there's a line that's slightly above it. I'm gonna make a mark on the center line, which is the front edge, to tell me where I think that it approximately is. Then I'm gonna to draw to the right vanishing point and to the left vanishing point. Then above this is a lot of sculptures. However, we need a line yet that is telling us where the bottom of the actual um, drop is. So we need to connect those to the vanishing point. Now in here, there's a whole bunch of reliefs, which I'll talk about here shortly. Now above here, we have more information yet that we have to do. So there's these little bumps that come up and however you guys want to draw them, 
go for it. I'm just drawing something quickly in there so that you can see what I would do. I would just have where I draw the exterior ones and then I would start dividing it out and making sure all of them are equally distant apart approximately. So if you watch, I'm counting how many there are. And here this is an odd number. So based off of that, I'm going to look at where that center point is. So I'm going to draw those little baby dashes that are there and then those are the center. Then from there I'm going to have two little lumps on the exterior edge of that and then I'll have my little dashes in between and my lumps in between there. So if you start dividing it out by figuring out where the center is and going from there, it makes it a lot easier, which is a lot easier to show on the left hand side. I'm just drawing little bumps right now. When we do the pen, you can get more detailed. So here we have the right hand side already done. Making sure that the tops are all equal, I'm gonna make sure the vanishing point, going to the vanishing point, so all the highest ones are, which I, they are. Okay, now I'm gonna do the left hand side, left hand vanishing point, basing it off of that center one that we have drawn. Now I'm gonna do the exterior one. From there, I'm gonna do one in the middle. Then in between those two, I'm gonna do another one in the middle. And then in the middle of those two, and then I'm going to continue this pattern. And then once I get the bigger bumps done, then I'm going to do those little bumps that are in between them. From here, you guys will notice that each of the details I am going to only do a small amount of. I am not going to have a full out complete drawing, such as you guys will continue each one of those areas. So for the relief of the little um, sculpture on the bottom, or for one of those little window spaces that's actually a relief, I'm only going to do one of them. You guys have three of them. So I just want you guys to make sure that you understand that you're going to continue beyond what I have drawn. Now here I'm going to be drawing the vertical line. So I figured out that approximately right in the middle, there is the vertical line segment. So in this little space, there's vertical lines, little box like shape things um, that have an upside down L because of the shadows. And then there's a half circle or three fourths of a circle that I'm gonna just hand draw next to it, which is almost what appears to be an oval because of the angles that we're at. But if you notice, you don't see the whole thing because of the shadows. So only draw what you see for shadows. So in this segment, don't draw, or in this section, don't draw what you think it is, draw only the shadows that you actually see. So here I'm only going to draw about an inch and a half worth of the space. So make sure that you guys continue drawing even more. So I'm drawing vertical lines and you can see that I have an upside down L with one of them because that's what the shadow is that I saw. Now I'm going to be drawing like three-fourths of a circle or half of a circle, whatever you want to say that it is. And then only the shadow area as well. You're going to continue this on the left and the right hand side of the building or of the arc. So continue that on both sides, this whole strip in here. Now if we move down, there is this little space that's right here that looks like it's a little flower pot looking. Um, there's actually gargoyles that are sitting right here. And so for the little gargoyles, if you made them look like sideways little peas a little bit, that works out. Um, and then you can have little dashes for the little lines in between. Um, remember, this is a far away viewpoint, so you're not going to have crazy details. So you won't be able to have the actual gargoyle. But if you just made it appear the shadow that you actually see, draw something similar to that. There is another line that is going in between there, so I'm going to draw another line in there. Cutting that flower part, pot apart. Also the shadow part on the top part of the little flower pot looking part with the gargoyles. Um, it's not flower pots by the way, it just looks like it, is um, 
a shadow. That shadow line you guys can place in like this or you can do it when you do the actual pen. I would just wait until pen, but some students get confused if they wait until pen. So whatever works and be what's best for you. You're going to continue this technique all the way over to the right hand side as well. Now in this area, there's little reliefs of little people and people with ho on horses like soldiers. So you have to remember what this whole structure was built for. So I'm drawing like little circles on the top and then it kind of squiggles on the bottom that are representing the figures or movement within it. Even some of them I'm starting to think maybe it could be a horse if I wanted it to with a little man sitting on top. So I'm just kind of scribbling within that space, but a scribble that is actually controlled. So I'm thinking head, I'm thinking body as I'm actually drawing them. You're going to do this across the entire space for this band. Above this band, there's actually um, block type structures that are sticking out, but you could just draw little squares, which I'll show you in just a second. These little squares are going to end up being the highlights that you end up having. Just make sure that you're thinking about the angles that your lines are going and they should be mimicking the lines that are surrounding it. So the top and the bottom line should be mimicking the bottom and the top line right above and below it, meaning it's orthogonal. So they're going to the vanishing points. So think of it that way. If you're on the right hand side, it's going to be doing the opposite. You're going to move down and do it in the relief as well. So if you notice the little structures and the little building guys are inside that relief. So you're going to draw little people inside the reliefs of the little windows. Now right here, there's also a little relief. So I'm gonna draw little people, same deal. But this one looks like almost like someone's shooting something. So I have a little stick sticking out. So I have a little head that I'm drawing, a little circle, and then a little structure for a body. So you're gonna do that on this um, little space. It is a um, archway type looking structure and then there's another space in between. You could get even more detailed with your pen when you get to there, but at least get this basic structure down. Inside those two spaces, there's these archways, which I'll do end up later. I'll do it on the right hand side so it's easier for you guys to see. But what it is, is these little blocks like this that have a little darker space with inside the center. It goes throughout the entire roof area, the ceiling area with inside this space. So follow along with the archway that is next to it. So whatever the direction is that that archway is doing and also what the photograph is showing you. Here I'm just drawing a few different arches. Now this line right here needs to go to the vanishing point. So I'm going to draw lines. So this is the top and the bottom of those little squares to the left vanishing point. So now in the inside you could just do by hand a little repetition of squares that are going on the interior spaces as well. Similar to the thing that I drew on the exterior on the outside. And you're going to repeat that on the other one, but it's going to go the opposite direction. Now here there's a whole bunch of little names and like a statement that's there. I don't really remember what it says. I haven't been there since like 2002. So here there's a whole bunch of um, little written statements. So if you could just kind of draw little lines that are suggesting the length and the size. It's repeated over here on the inside as well. So right here there's a whole bunch of uh, a whole list of like the people that were generals and stuff with inside there. On here for the sculpture, that is um, technically a relief because the backhand side you cannot see, it's not three dimensional all the way around, but I'm just drawing the exterior line of it. You can, um, some students have drawn it to the point where it looks like a palm or a pine tree, but do the best that you can to show, I just draw the outside line and I'll do the same on the other side. Then I'd go back in and I'll just start looking at where the shadows are on the actual structure itself. So I'm not drawing exactly what I um, know it is or looking at a photograph of this specific piece. I'm just looking at the shadows that I see with inside the piece that's above. 
I'm just blocking those shadows in similar to how we did negative space. So think about your negative space usage here and using those darker areas as negative space and allowing the actual sculpture itself that's sticking out as positive. So I'm just kind of blocking it in and then I'm starting to suggest form of a head and going from there. So for this project, um, you guys need to have all your details done by the time that it's due before we go on to actual pen. Pen, we're going to go in and add even all the shading and details a little bit more clean um, because a pen has a smaller tip, which is going to allow you to get to that point. If you um, have a black pen that will always look the best, it doesn't matter what type of pen it is as long as you guys have a pen. If you do not have a pen and you have a blue pen or a red pen, then that's what we have to do. So here you have the building structure done once you get all your details in. So remember, I didn't do them all. You have to repeat them throughout the whole piece. Now you have to think is that we have to get the building so it's not floating. So here I'm just going to be drawing some little outline of bushes. I'm not going to draw the building that's in the background. I'm drawing a little dash here on the left hand side that I'm going to say is my her like my ground line and I'm aligning it up with my horizon line. This is going to be a nice straight line here for me. Now I'm going to add suggestions of people. So I'm actually going to look at the people that are on here and just kind of draw a like circle for a head and then upside down use almost and little scribbles to show movement. So you have to remember um, is that we want to show this as a scale. So how big is this building? How big is this structure that we actually have? So here I'm just drawing an upside down U and with a circle on top and then some scribbles underneath for each of these people. Some of them are going to be messier than others and that's perfect. So this is just showing how large this actual building is in relationship to people. I am not going to draw all of those. There's hundreds of people that are out there and um, so just draw a few to show a good representation. And throughout this whole project, you guys should only be working, um, like when you get to the pen section as well, you guys really should only be working 22 minutes a day or 45 minutes if it's a blank day. So please don't overexert yourself on this. But um, this is a pretty fun project. I would have a hard time putting it down as well. I'm just going to throw a couple people on the right hand side. I'd probably throw more than I do, but the left hand side has a lot of people. So I would throw some more on the right hand side too. Just make it look nice and even. I just didn't do it. So good luck. Um, hope you guys are doing well and I can't wait to see your projects. Here's just a really shaky video of what I had done for you um, of the actual piece. So I'm trying to zoom in for you guys and zoom around. Um, sorry, it's really shaky.